know who I am. Tell that neighbor, say, neighbor, I know who I am. 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 Do you know who you are? Do you know who you are? Because I know who I am. Are you ready, someone? Are, are you ready to sing to an awesome God? To an awesome God. Are you ready? Come on, say. Come on, say. Let's go. What, 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 what? Come on. Say what, 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 what? What, 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 what? Come on, put those hands together. Come on. He's an awesome God, awesome God, mighty God, mighty God. I give you praise, I give you praise, awesome God, awesome God. You are an awesome. God. He's an awesome God. God. You are a mighty God. God. I give you praise. praise. Awesome God. One more time. He's an awesome God. Come on, say. He's an awesome God. Let's go like this. Awesome God. Mighty God. Mighty God. I give you praise. I give you praise. Say, awesome God. Yeah. Awesome God. He's an awesome God. Together. Are you ready for this? Go. One, two, three, three. Come on, just put your hands together. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Set.
after me. Say, say. grateful unto the Lord. Do I have somebody who's saying I'm just grateful unto the Lord for what he's doing in my life, for what he has done in my life, for what he has done in my family. Do I have somebody who's like that? If I have somebody like that, just wave your hands, just wave your hands, just wave your hands. Just wave your hands. Now I want you to tell your neighbor, say neighbor, do you have an idea what he has done for me? Look at the other neighbor, say neighbor, do you have an idea? Do you have any idea what he has done for me? Do you have any idea? So I want you to tell that neighbor now. Say, everybody look, look, see what the Lord has done. Everybody look, look, see Just want to hear the church on it. Everybody look, look, see what the Lord has done. Everybody look, look, yeah, what the Lord has done. When you are saying everybody, it means you are telling everybody that's right. So you have to move right around and say, everybody, look what he has done for me. I had no money. He gave me money. I had no favor upon my life. Now favor is following me. Are you ready, somebody? Are you ready? Before we get into the song, I just want us to dance like this. Come on, dance like this. Let's go like this. Come on, somebody, come on. You have to dance braggadociously. Come on. Let's go one more time. Let's go one more time. Now I want you to tell your neighbor now. Are you ready? Say, say. Everybody look, look, see what the Lord has done. Everybody look, look, yeah, what the Lord has done. Everybody look, look, yeah, what the Lord has done. Everybody look, look, yeah, what the Lord has done. Everybody look, look, yeah, what the Lord has done. Come on, say, 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 when I had no money. My life. Say, when I get no money, when I get no money, say, when I get no favor upon my life, when I get no favor upon my life, come on, let's say, say, favor, 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 fav
Favor, favor, favor. Favor, favor, favor. Favor, favor, favor. Favor, favor. Come on, go like this. Come on, go like this. Come on. I want you to speak favor upon your life. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? As you go like this. One, two. Say it, say Mafuta, mafuta, Elele, mafuta. Mafuta, mafuta, mafuta. Elele, say mafuta. Mafuta, mafuta, Elele, mafuta. A Jehovah. Mafuta. Elele, mafuta. Look at your neighbor, say, hey, my foot died. My foot died. My foot died. My foot died. Come on, come on. Let's go like this, somebody. Let's go. Just listen. Come on, come on. Everybody look look who ye what the Lord is Now that you have told your neighbor what the Lord God has done for you. Now I want you to give praises unto him now. Are you ready to give praises unto him? Go like this. Come on. Then. Go like this. Go like this. Say, say. Oh, 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 only you be God, yo. Are you ready? Say, oh, oh, oh. only you be God, yo. God, yo. God, yo. God, yo. Somebody, come on, let's go. One, two, three. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Ah, hey, 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 hey. Ah, hey, hey, hey. Ah, hey, hey, hey. Ah, hey, hey, Tamba tamba uchi dai, uchi tambi la mari wako. Tamba tamba uchi dai, uchi tambi la mari wako. Tamba tamba uchi dai, uchi tambi la mari wako. Tamba tamba uchi dai, uchi tambi la mari wako. Eh, bina bina bina, bini la yesu bina, bina bina bina, bini la yesu bina, bina bina bina, bini la yesu bina, bina bina bina, ali bini la yesu. To the Lord, come on, let's go. Say, say, you want to want to work, you want your son of work, you want to want to work, you want your son of work, you want to want to work, you want your son of work, you want to want to work, you want your son of 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 work, you want Haya 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 Simu zira mama koko na Jesu Simu zira mama koko na Jesu Simu zira come on somebody scream and celebrate the Lord Come on somebody
somebody scream one more time, celebrate, 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 celebrate. Jesus name every time when a prophet begins to pray it is a sign that you need to switch in to the frequency because any frequency that you don't switch in you can never listen to the God that we save is a speaking God and if he's a speaking God, there is a frequency that he's speaking on. And it is the frequency of prayer that causes you to hear divinity. That's the reason any man who cannot pray, any man who cannot talk, he can never receive divine instruction. It is through talking to God that man's destiny is secured. I repeat again, it's very important. To pray. Amen. Lift your hands and say, Father. Father. Lift your hands like a believer. Say, Father. Father. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I declare. I declare. With the word of the prophet. With the word of the prophet. My future. My future. Is guaranteed. Is guaranteed. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Put your two hands for Pow. Jesus. Please sit on the heads of your enemies braggadociously and put your two hands for Jesus. I did not say you sit down. I said put your two hands for Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. May the Lord bless you. Put up two hands for these wonderful people. Now, like I started paraphrasing and pandemoning on uh, a subject caption dealing with uh, 21 robbers of destiny. And uh, we looked at one robber of destiny, which is the robber of discouragement. And I said discouragement is the force of darkness to reduce the level of your blessing. To reduce your potential. To reduce your capacity. Every time when you are discouraged is every time the devil deals with the strength of moving forward. That's a reason you need to understand that on your way to your destiny on your way to your destination, I repeat again, there's a difference between destiny and destination. I repeat again, there's a difference between destiny and destination. Destiny is simply a life adventure or a life journey that you embark to your destination. Destination is the final point. It's the resting place whereby you have accomplished everything, where you are now enjoying life. You have done ministry and now you have succeeded. That is rest. And uh, that's what we call destiny. Am I talking about destination? Praise God. So you need to understand on your way, on your way to destiny, to destination, there are about 21 robbers of destiny. That's the reason discouragement is one of them. Many people are discouraged and every time when you are discouraged, you stop praying. Any time you are discouraged, you stop fasting. Any time you are discouraged, your potential in life is reduced. Any time you are discouraged, you start walking like a chicken. Yet you are a lion. Am I talking to somebody here? 
So we dealt with the what? With the robber of what? Of discouragement. Lift your hand, say discouragement. Lift your hand and shout it with your mouth. Say discouragement. Say discouragement. Any minister who is a discouraged minister, he will never achieve anything. Discouragement is a force of limitation. Discouragement is a force of failure. Discouragement is a force of poverty. Discouragement is a force of success syndrome. Whenever you are discouraged, I repeat again, whenever you are discouraged, your potential to fight against your enemy is reduced. Am I talking to somebody here? You begin to operate on low battery. You are not hearing this. You are supposed to operate on full battery. Now discouragement, it becomes a reducer of strength. It reduces your capacity to think. It reduces your capacity to fight. In order for you to fight against the devil, you begin to run away against the devil. That's what discouragement does. And any believer who is a discouraged believer, very soon you are about to become an unbeliever. Because it is very fast to become an unbeliever with the force of discouragement. That's the reason there are people who stopped coming to church. Why? Discouragement wrought the strength. There are people that used to pray. They are no longer praying. Why? Discouragement robbed the strength. There are people who used to fear the Lord. And now they are discouraged with the preaching of holiness. They decide now to do whatever they can do to find pleasure. Discouragement is a robber of destiny. Lift your hand. Say dealing with 21 robbers. Shout it like a member of Holy Ghost Embassy. Dealing with 21 robbers. Now. Today, we are dealing with a very antagonistic and braggadocious and ballistic robber. Amen. Number two, the robber of destiny. Ladies and gentlemen, you need to understand that the devil is after your destiny. No matter how smart you are, without power, you will suffer devils. If you want to die prematurely while you are carrying destiny, if you want to abort your destiny, wow, you are smiling. Lack of power. <laughs> let me stop. Let me, let me go home. These people, they can't hear me. Can I go? I can feel your spirit. You are too far. You are looking at me like, who is this man? What is he talking about? Now, tonight we are dealing with the robber of not tithing. Or the robber of tithe. <laughs> the robber of tithe. The robber of tithe. Ladies and gentlemen, tithe is simply a death in the midst of finances. Tithe is simply death in the midst of your finances. Ladies and gentlemen, you need to understand whenever divinity begins to sponsor humanity is for two things. Number one, there is money that belongs to you and there is money that belongs to God. So when you eat what belongs to God, it is a death. I'm not hearing this. Now, ladies and gentlemen, in the study of monology, the study of numbers, number one represents God himself. Number two represents unity. Number three represents agreement. Number four represents balance. The leg has got how the, the chair has got how many uh, 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 how many legs? Four legs. Number five represent the number of grace. Number six it represents the number of a man. Are you listening to me here? Number seven it means the number of perfection. Number eight it means the number of grace. Number nine. It means the number of remembrance. Number 10, it means the number of death. Whenever you eat tithe, you take up the place.
face of God and say, I am God. Whatever God can eat, even a man can eat. Listen, it is only God who can eat tight and believe. It is only God who can eat tight and live. That's the reason tight is the 10%. Whenever you eat 10%, you are chopping death. You are chopping sickness. You are chopping poverty. You are chopping all manner of satanic, molybonic situation in your life. You need to understand that the death is a number of death. That's the reason it is only God who can eat death and live. Any man in church who eats tight is simply saying that even me, I have the ability to stand in the shoes of God to begin to eat what God eats. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the reason we have a lot of poor people in the church. Poor pastors. Why are they poor? They ate what belongs to God. Now, Death financially has entered them. I'm not hearing this. <laughs> Number 10. Any man who eats the tenth, he eats death. <laughs> My God. My God. These people, Lord, they are not hearing me. Let me stop. No, Papa. Let me stop. No, Papa. Let me stop. No, Papa. There are many pastors that are experiencing. Can you be in the spirit? I'll slap you. Are you listening to me here? I'm not feeling, I'm feeling, I'm feeling something. I'm feeling something is moving. Ah. Oh, yes. I'm not saying I'll slap you physically, I'll slap you spiritually. Uh -huh. You will pray in tongues for seven days. Uh -huh. Say power. Power. Say power. Power. Say power. Power. Whenever a man begins to chop tight, tight is the death in your finances. Whenever God blesses you, he blesses you on two platforms. Number one, there is money that belongs to him and there is money that belongs to God. And whenever you eat what belongs to God, number ten, which is the tithe, tithe is the ten percent of your income. Whenever God blesses you because every blessing from God is a divine sponsorship. Whenever you refuse to give tithe, it's simply saying that where I am, it is by my mighty, it is my brain. Are you listening to me here? Whenever you stop tithing, you are simply saying no to divine supply. Uh -huh. Whenever you stop giving time, you are saying, what I have, wherever I have been, it is because of me. It is because of my wisdom. Uh -huh. That's the reason many people, they are fired from work. Many people, they are suffering financially. Why? They ate what belongs to God. They said, where I am, it is because of my mighty. It is because of my purpose. It is because of my documents, uh -huh. my master's degrees. Anytime you refuse to give you refuse divine sponsorship. Gosh. You are saying what I have. What I have is only me. That's the reason many destinies are not moving forward. Many companies are closing. We have got a lot of pastors who are very anointed yet sick. Tithe is a death. Say death. Yeah. In the midst of finances. It's only God who can chop death and survive and live. But for you, whenever you begin to chop the ten, you begin to die. That's the reason many people, they are so powerful in prayer, but financially they are dead. Why? They ate. They ate what belongs to the Lord. They ate death warrant. You ate a death sentence. When, oh, number two. Whenever you eat tithe, remember, tithe is a robber. <laughs> it's a robber of what? Destiny. In order for you to enjoy financial blessings, you begin to enjoy financial cases. 
Listen to me. I have come to discover in this lifetime any man who is not a faithful fighter, any man who does not give what belongs to God, give them time, they will collapse. Because time is a robber of destiny. It does not matter how much you can be coming to church. You can be so fire-eyed. You can be coming to church early in the morning. Sweeping the church. Singing in the press team. You can be a pastor. Very anointed. You'll be anointed but financially lame. Tithe is a robber of destiny. There are many of you. You are supposed to enjoy financial grace. Financial liberty. You have been chopping what belongs to God. Your destiny has been exchanged. In order for you to enjoy financial blessing, you are enjoying financial curses. Life is very hard. Whatever you touch, it tends to dust. In order for it to turn to God, it is turning to dust. It is tithe which is a robber of destiny. My God. Amen. My God. Amen. Die. Is a robber of what? Destiny. In the book of Malachi chapter number 3. God said, bring all the tithes. He did not say you must keep them. Because he knew that. There is money when you keep. Problem is inevitable. There is money when you keep. Problem is inevitable. Cancer is inevitable. HIV is inevitable. It is tithe that unties your blessing. Whenever you cannot tithe, you are already tithe in every area. You don't need prayer. Even if when a pastor can lay his leg on you, whether it's pa the pastor can sit on you, you will never prosper. Whether they take the, the ga gallon of anointing oil, pour on you. <laughs> tight. Whenever, professor, you begin to eat tight, what belongs to God? He said, bring. Let's go to Malachi. Malachi. Chapter number three. Jesus. <laughs> you must be, look. <laughs> tight is death in the midst of your money. You know, eating that death. Malachi. Put it on the screen. Jesus. Jesus. Put it on the screen. My God. Oh. Are you ready? Give us. Give us number seven. Number seven. I want to show you what <coughs> are you there? Okay, let's read verse number seven. One, two, three, go. Yet from the days of your fathers, you have gone away from my ordinances and you have not kept them. Return unto me and I will return unto you, says the Lord of hosts. But you say, In what? In what way shall we return? Return. Verse number eight. Verse number eight. One, two, three, go. Will a man rob God? Uh -huh. How is he going to rob God? How will a man rob God? Hey, by the robber of what? By the robber of what? How will a man rob God? By the robber of what? Tithe. So it is tithe that robs your destiny. It is tithe that robs your happiness. Ah. It is tithe that robs your breakthroughs. Every time when you are praying, you can never see breakthroughs. Check yourself. There is a way. There is somewhere where you are not doing well. Because tithe is a robber. He's a robber of destiny. He's a robber of happiness. He's a robber of dreams. He's a robber of visions. He's a robber of potential. He's a robber of breakthroughs. That's the reason you are praying. You are praying. Your prayers, they are like noise in the ears of God. Why? There is a robber of destiny. No matter how much you can pray, no matter how much you can fast, no matter how much you can go fire from heaven, my dear, you will never prosper with a robber. Of destiny. Take it back. 
take it back. That's the reason you need to understand. You need to be afraid. You need to be afraid to chop tight. <laughs> Number eight. One, two, three, go. Will a man rob God? Can you read like soldiers? One, two, three, go. Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, in what way have we robbed you? In tithes and precepts. Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. Uh -huh. You have what? You have robbed me. How have you robbed God? You have taken what belongs to God. Amen. Because you have taken what belongs to God. The tithe that was meant to bless you, it is now working against you. The tithe that was supposed to take you on top, it has become a curse. It has become like blood speaking against the financial lives of a person. You need to understand these things. The day when God gave me a revelation of tithe, I said to my house, I said, me and my house, we will never eat tight because it is tight that brings protection. It is tight that brings preservation. Amen. It is tight that guarantees a man for blessing. Ladies and gentlemen, any time when men gather, when God releases angels, it is tight that becomes a signal to draw an angel blessing. Amen. We a man robbed God, yet you have robbed me in tithe and offering. You have robbed me in tithe and offering. So, tithe is a robber of your blessing. <laughs> is a what? It's a, robber. it's a robber of your blessing. Is a rob. It does not matter. You can be coming to church. If you want, you can make up your mind and say, for the rest of my life, I will never tithe. Wait and see. If your life will progress, scriptures can never be broken. When God says, my word, have I exalted? Know that it is a principle of divinity. Amen. God can never break his way though. Amen. Tight. What happens? <laughs> When you eat tight, number one, you chop death. Number one, you chop death. There are many people that are dying prematurely. Listen, when God was annoyed against Adam, he said, all the days of your life, I have given you 120 years. In the annoyance of God, God decided to give man 120 years. Yet a man with his stubbornness, lack of tight, he reduces his lifespan. In order for him to live 120, he's living 60 half. Many pastors are dying prematurely because they have refused. They have refused to honor God with tight. Tight begins to rob their years. Any time when you are not, you are not giving what belongs to God, your years are being robbed by the robber of tight. Any time you refuse to give what belongs to God, God begins to, it begins to chop your years, years by years. He chops it. That's the reason people, they are dying. You see, a, a man, a man of, of 40, 42 years, died prematurely. A man of 30 years, died prematurely. A man just from nowhere, in a car accident, his destiny is robbed in a twinkling of an eye. How do you call that? A robber of destiny. Tithe, whenever you are not giving tithe, you allow death to become your friend. You allow the grave to open for you. You allow the coffin the coughing to begin to call for you as a customer. That's a reason you need to understand that they are, I'm teaching, I'm teaching, I'll be teaching on 21 robbers of destiny. That's a reason. In these 21 days, you need to position yourself. You must never be on the path of no tithing. Hey. away from it. You can't run away. You can't run away. That's the reason you see 
most of the people that are very poor is believers. It's because there is a robber. The same, the same, the same, the same thing that God has entrusted for their blessing is the same thing that is working against them. Tithe has become the robber of your destiny. Why? Because it was through tithe that God wrapped tithe with the blessing of financial grace. There is no, look, there is no one who prospers by going to prayer and fasting. There, there is no one who prospers for going for prayer and fasting. You can go for 40 days, 90 days, if you want, do 120 days. You come back very thin. You will find anger waiting for you. Anger will be waiting for you and anger will molest you. And you listen to me here. Death. That's the reason many people that are dying. They are dying. L listen. Listen. One of the men, Bishop David Oyadepo, the founder of Winner's Chapel, Faith Tabernacle in Nigeria. The man is building, is building a 100,000 seater church. Seated comfortably. Every Sunday, he has got five services. And people are seated they are seated every time from zero four, from zero four to the whole day. People are coming in, going out. How do you call that? Supernatural increase. Are you listening to me here? Whenever you are a faithful tighter, number becomes your friend. Amen. A multiplication becomes your friend. Look, I've seen people. <laughs> that are titles. A man called a man, the founder of Coca-Cola, the founder of Coca-Cola, one of the faithful titles. The man he tithes in billions. Yet the man is not becoming poor. It's because of the principle of tithe. <laughs> That's the reason. Whenever you are not giving tithe, I told you uh, the robber of destiny. What happens? Number one, you die prematurely. Financial, you die prematurely. Your years are reduced. Your lifespan is reduced. That's the reason many people are suffering from sicknesses. Sicknesses that doctor cannot trace. They are suffering from diabetes. They are suffering from cancer. They are suffering from a headache. Why? If you are not paying tight, you will pay it indirect. Number two. What happens when you don't give tight? <laughs> Remember, we are dealing with robbers of destiny. Some of you, they... <coughs> The tide that was supposed to bless you, the tide that was supposed to lift you, you ate it, it's in your mouth, it's in your stomach. It's in your stomach. It's in your stomach. That's the reason you must heal, your, you must heal yourself. When you suffer stomach problem, <laughs> you heal yourself by going to the toilet for seven days. Number two, what happens when you eat tight? Whenever you eat tight, you allow the robber, the robber of destiny, the robber of destiny, the robber of destiny, which is death in the midst of your finances. Number two, whenever you eat tight, you eat tight, you simply refuse divine sponsorship. You simply re refuse divine sponsorship. You simply say, whatever finance I have, whatever company I have, wherever I have been, whatever I have in my bank account, it is not you, God. It is not divine supply. It is my, my mighty. And God said, because of what you have said, I will close the windows of heaven. I will close the heaven. Many people, they are operating on close the heaven. Why? They refuse divine supply, divine sponsorship. Every time you refuse to give tithe, you are simply saying to God, that God, even the job I have, it is not you. Even the car I have, it is me. And every time a man takes up the glory of God, God releases an, a robber. You are simply saying, God, even the husband I have, it's, my, it's me. It's because of my beauty. It's because of my beauty. It's because of my hips. And very soon your hips will finish. You become like Simon Jojo. You walk like he. Simon Jojo. Sister Simon Jojo. 
Oh, God will make one hip bigger, the other one smaller. So you begin to walk like this. Simon Jojo, sister Simon Jojo. <laughs> Whenever you see her walking like this, you know that she ate tight. The rubber of. <laughs> You are simply saying, even God, the children that I have, the children that I have, it's because of me. Whenever you refuse to give tithe, the robber, the robber of destiny, which is the same tithe, begins to work against you. You simply refuse divine sponsorship, divine, di divine enablement, divine strength. You simply say, God, even the car that I have, I bought it with my money. There is no man who has money without divine sponsorship. That's a reason in the heart of a person, there is a vacuum that can be only be filled by divinity. That's a reason you can have money. I have seen rich men. I have seen rich men that are having problems with healthy. They can't buy healthy. <laughs> Whenever you refuse to give tithe, you are allowing the robber of destiny to invade you. You refuse divine sponsorship. Even the money that you have, you say, God, it's not you who gave me. It is me. It's because of my work. I have been working very hard. I have been waking up in the morning and sleeping late. That's the reason many people, many people are suffering. They are suffering. Listen to me. Your coming to church does not answer financial, financial breakthrough. Your coming to church does not answer to financial breakthrough. What answers to financial breakthrough is obedience to what God says. Are you listening to me here? Whenever you don't obey God, the robber of tithe fights against you. The one who's supposed to bless you begins to steal from you. Number three, what happens? I'll be very fast. What happens when you refuse? When you refuse, remember when you refuse, the robber who's supposed to bless you, he begins to rob from you. Number three, number three, untimely sickness. Untimely sickness. When God was annoyed with the Israelites, he told Moses, he said, because that, because I have called you, I have seen that you are an obedient servant of mine. I will show my miracle. And God released the boys of Egypt. God performed two of miracles. Is it ten? Ten or ten miracles. Ten miracles. He performed ten miracles. And among them, it was boys. You know boys? Boys? <laughs> you know boys? Eh? In my country, we call it if you put it. You know, boys, you know, <laughs> those, those, those growth, that grows, they grow in your armpit to the point that when it begins to grow, you can't even take your armpit down. You, you begin to walk like this. You begin to walk like uh, 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 Cosmo City Airways. <laughs> Are you listening to me here? You begin to walk like this, like you want to fly. Are you listening to me here? Huh? They'll come out from every place. Even the place where God is refusing. <laughs> oh my God. They don't select the path. They will choose for themselves. Even doctors don't know. It is not written in their biography. It's not written. They'll begin to call Americans to come and do tests on them because it's a new sickness. They need to come and study. So they become a project. Haven't you ever seen people? Huh? They said this sickness that you have, we have never seen it. It's only you. You are the first one. So we'll call Americans to come and do a study on you. become a 
in a disease project? Have you ever seen people that have got a headache? They have got a headache. They have got low BP. They have got high BP both in one person. Low and high both in one person. Cancer found. They become a universal platform of sickness. When God was annoyed with the children of Israel, he released the boils and the boys, these were growth, abnormal growth. Do you know? Shabalia, Ikaru, Shabalia, Ikadosh. Look, leprosy was one of them. Leprosy is a, is a skin disease. It is a disease that eats the flesh. It eats the bones. In one day, your fingers, your flesh is finished. That's the punishment that God gave the children of, of Egypt because of disobedience. Every time when you eat tight, the rubber is released of sickness. You begin to seek sickness that have never, you have never seen them. Every Sunday, I meet different people. I meet different people. Every Sunday, I meet different people. And I can tell you, some of you, your problems, you have allowed the robber. What I meet every Sunday. Boys were released. A certain man came to me. He came to me. In Tanzania, I was in Tanzania. I looked at this man. I looked at this man. The man had the three breasts. I said, Where did you remove it? Three. One here, one here, one here. Double. A breast here. Eh? I said, I've never seen it. Don't joke. I looked at him, I wanted to jump even me. I said, God, what is this? I've never seen it. My faith was challenged to see a man with three pressure. Huh? Three. One, one. The other one here. I've seen things. I've seen, look, I've seen sickness. So. I've seen sickness. I said, the man in Tanzania, <laughs> the man, he had, he had pregnancy. You know, you know pregnancy? Hey, like <clears throat> pregnancy like this. Nine months, fully loaded, ready to give birth. Ready to give birth. The man, they tried to pump it out. Ha! <laughs> it was not going. <laughs> Have you ever gone to the doctor? The doctor is telling you, say you are okay, yet you are feeling pain. Whenever you eat tight, sickness, you can never run away from it. Even when you drink panadoquinine, droquin, you will never be healed. I've seen people. This man had a big stomach. When I looked at him, I said, God, what is this? And the Lord is saying, lay your hand on him. I will have mercy on him. And when I wanted to lay my hand, the Lord said, ask him. Does he tight? And when I asked him, the man could not talk. He said, I'm feeling pain. I said, you must talk, sir. I said, you must talk. Tell me, do you tight? And the man said, no, I've not been tight for 10 years. And I said, that's the reason. The protection of God has been removed away from you. The man underwent six operations on his stomach. He was operated on his stomach. After operating him, because of the operation, the stomach began to grow abnormally because the robber invaded him. Listen to me. If you don't want to see sickness, if you want to enjoy good health, you must listen to the instructions of God because it is instructions that are gateways to supernatural breakthroughs, to supernatural health. Are you listening to me here? How do I stand? I have been preaching from January till this time. Not even sickness, not even headache. How do you call that? Supernatural healing. 
Whenever you see a man preaching from January to December without any sickness, without even sneezing, without even stomach problem, go eat supernatural breakthroughs. There is something that you don't know. Not even a day have you ever heard they say, I'm sick. If, my son, if I was not a faithful tighter, this change would have crumbled. I'm telling you the truth. I know the battles. There are battles that I went through this year, from last year to this year. If it was not because of tight that I tied every time, the robber would have invaded me. He would have taken everything around me. Because the mission of the robber is to take everything that you have labored for. Sickness. God release boils. Leprosy. Leprosy. I was in the old building one time. They brought a lady. The lady on the wheelchair. As I looked at her. I looked at the legs. The, no, no, it was here. It was here. It was here. The lady, the legs were too big. She was suffering from elephantiasis. Are you listening to me here? Elephantiasis. Elephantiasis is a sickness that makes the body parts to grow abnormally. Are you listening to me here? The lady, she was not walking. And on top of that, the leg began to decompose. It began to rot. Are you listening to me here? It began to remove pus. And from nowhere, she became like a leopard. Spots began to appear all over. Some of you, you saw it. Doctors have tried to do everything. There is a level where even doctors cannot heal you. Whenever you see me, I stand, I stand here in front. I say, all oh, those that have got tight, rise up, rise up and give tight is because I understand when God releases an angel of darkness it is only those that can obey his instruction that survive sickness is inevitable number four a man stops enjoying supernatural breakthroughs When I say a man stops enjoying supernatural breakthroughs, the heaven is shattered. There was a story in the book of Kings. The Bible says, Elisha gave a prophecy. Elijah gave a prophecy. He said, for half and half years, there will not be rain. Is it Elijah? Elijah. He said, for, 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 for three and a half years, there will not be rain. And according to to the word of a prophet. Amen. Amen. The whole heaven was closed. Amen. The windows closed. Huh? The air vents closed. Not even a drop. Animals began to die. There was an economical crackdown. People economically, even, the, even, even uh, those that were educated who started economics, they could not figure out what was the problem. There was, there was a problem in the country to the point that they began they began to mock the prophet who rose up and said by this time around things will change whenever heaven is closed over you not even your prayer can open it is tithe that opens the heaven tithe is the only equipment the only force that has the ability to your heaven to open your doors to open your windows whenever your windows are shattered down by your disobedience it is only tithe that can open it that's the reason whenever god wants to bless you financially he does not tell you to pray he will tell you bring the tithe your heaven is closed and many people, their heavens are closed in marriage. They are not enjoying supernatural breakthroughs. What is supernatural breakthroughs? Supernatural breakthroughs is when you are seated and God is supplying. 
Supernatural breakthroughs is when you are seated and God is supplying. It's when you are relaxing and God is making you to travel. Mm. <laughs> Going to your destination while you are flying. There are two kind of, there are different kind of destiny. There are those that are using motorcycle. And there are those that are using wheelbarrow. Wheelbarrow, you know it. One wheel. There are those that are using uh, 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 a bicycle. Bicycle. And there are those that are using a car. There are those that are using a Yaris. There are those that are using a Rose Rose. At least a Yaris and Rose Rose. It's destiny. And there are those that are using business class. And there are those that are using first class. All of them, they are on the adventure to destiny. But the difference is the mode of transport mode of transport. The mode of transport. Those that are on the business class using flying emirates, as they are traveling, they don't enjoy bumps. As they are moving to their destination, they have flight attendants that even ask them, what do you want to eat? You make an order while you are in the airspace. Making an order in the airspace where there's no tree, where there's no restaurant, and everything is found. When we talk about the, uh, supernatural, supernatural breakthroughs, is whereby you are not laboring like an elephant, you are relaxing, and God is doing the rest. <laughs> there is a level of favor. That my children, God will take them tonight. Yes. Supernatural breakthroughs, my son, is whereby you are seated in ministry, no stress. Everything God puts them in position. I've reached a level, and now I don't stress. I don't stress. Because I've understood the level of supernatural breakthroughs. Not even a day I woke up and said, oh God, I don't have money. Because I understand. The, the one that I obey, if I obey him, he will supply all my needs. Amen. Supernatural breakthroughs Amen. is where by God causes your destiny helper to begin to look for you. <laughs> to begin to look for you. Tithe. Tithe. Provokes your, your destiny helpers, destiny midwives, those that are meant to help you, they appear. You must understand. Tithe also is a robber of destiny, is a destiny killer. And at the same time, when you tithe, the same that was meant to kill you, it blesses you. Pow! Supernatural breakthroughs. Supernatural breakthroughs is whereby you are not buying clothes, but you are dressing every day. And you are not what? Buying clothes. You are changing clothes. Changing clothes every day. <laughs> every day, smell, smelling very fresh. Not like a bushman. Are you listening? Oh yes. I've got perfumes in my in my in my in my room. I, you can't count them. Some of them they look. I, I, I've never I've never used them. Me to go and buy perfume for what? For what? Yet God they said, even the birds of the air, uh -huh. they don't wake. Yet they receive supernatural breakthroughs. Ah. And he said, What more you? Beds, they don't wake, but you wake. Who is very important between a bed and you? Huh? 
yet a baby enjoys supernatural breakthrough. You. Are you listening? Oh, yes. That's the reason you need to understand how God operates. My son, supernatural breakthroughs is whereby you are the least in the company, yet the figure of God decides to select you for promotion. Amen. Supernatural breakthrough is the finger of God rewriting your destiny, correcting your mess, correcting your past so that your mess can be a message in the future. is when you find a woman who is too qualified and you are not qualified. <laughs> Supernatural breakthroughs is when you are a village girl. You are married to a bank manager. And he begins to teach you monology. How to count cash. The whole night you are counting cash. In the village, you are counting maize. <laughs> You are counting maize. But now you are counting cash. Having overnight ah. of counting cash. Oh. Receive that level. Oh, receive it. Power. Having overnight. Where are you going? I'm going for an overnight. To do what? To count cash. Amen. Power. A time is coming, we'll be going for an overnight for counting money. Uh -huh. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, I am going for an overnight. I am going for an overnight to count cash. To count cash. Power. You can't sleep. Some of you, when you are counting cash, you're like, you are, you are looking this side. <laughs> they have got a sensor. <laughs> are you listening? Supernatural breakthroughs. Whenever you eat tight, it becomes a hook in your mouth. The devil will pull you from wherever you are. You know what it means, a hook? Huh? A hook is a sharp instrument that is used to catch fish from its source. Whenever you eat tight, it's like a hook in your mouth that will remove you from your source, your source of money. That's the reason people, there are people who are millionaires and now they are ex millionaires. I've got ex managers, ex boyfriend, ex girlfriend, ex pastor, ex bank manager, ex accountant, ex doctor. Asking about you, my ex. Asking about you, my ex. Asking about you, are you my ex boss? Are you listening? People lose their positions, people lose their identity. Whenever you eat tight, you don't have protection. It is a hook. God will not protect you, He will expose you to the devil. Destiny, tithe. Pastor, I have seen how faithful God has been to me. Any man who is a faithful tither enjoys supernatural breakthroughs like never before. There are some certain things I don't know how God does them. I don't know how God does them. He calls those things that are not to be. Whenever you are faithful, those
those things that you desire, you bring them at your disposal. You bring them at your disposal. My phone just from nowhere. I was using an iPhone. Uh, A7. A7. That phone is how much? Is it? Almost, almost 18,000. It went off. Just from nowhere. I did not cry. If it is you, you have that attack. <laughs> That's because of a phone. And you begin to call his pastor and say, Papa, I am sick. Pray for me. My heart is broken. It's broken, Papa. I am broken. How many times does your, does your heart break? Several times. Always. Your heart is broken. On an iPhone. Papa, my heart is broken. I, it got off like today. Tomorrow, I did not tell my son. No. I was seated at home. My son from somewhere. God spoke to him. He said, your dad needs a phone. He went to the shop. He went and bought a new one in the box. He came at my house. I was seated watching television. He said, daddy, I brought you a phone. I looked at him. I said, my son, you brought me a phone? I said, kneel down. I said, Kobrondosia Ikaduza Soprotose Enebia Ikojalia Irushaba There is a blessing that comes out from the heart, from the pancreas Jewish of the prophet to release a prophetic blessing. Amen. I bless you. I said, son, you are blessed. Because you are you have discernment. I did not tell you, but you picked it in the spirit. You are a son. That's how I began to enjoy it. I'm enjoying it without stress. Uh -huh. I did not buy. Uh -huh. Yet I'm enjoying. Amen. You shall sleep in houses. I receive that it. That will never bear. I receive it. You will drive cars. I receive it. That you did not buy. I receive how it. How do you call that supernatural breakthrough? Power. Supernatural breakthroughs. Supernatural breakthroughs. One son of mine, one Sunday, he came to me. After I prayed for him, I blessed him. I prophesied to him. He said, Daddy, I'm following you home. I said, Son, why are you following him home? He said, Daddy, I'm following you. Not knowing that he had prepared something. He packed money in his boot. 300,000 cash in his boot. He followed me. Reaching home, he packed it in my own eyes. Packed it like he's packing blocks. So. <laughs> May you begin to pack money like you're packing blocks. I receive it. He packed it, packed it, packed it. And he hold it. He said, Daddy, this is yours. I said, son, your brother is there is a level where supernatural breakthroughs is too nyafu nyafu. Ah, major. It's too much. That week, I received fifty thousand US dollars cash without stress. Uh -huh. fifty thousand US dollars cash. How much is that? Six fifty. Enjoying it. I took my wife out. I said, "Let me show you uh -huh. what it is to be married to a uh -huh. prophet." Uh -huh. Major. <laughs> Let me show you what it is to be married to a prophet. Because wives of the prophet, they are so much persecuted. I said, my wife, this is a time to enjoy. Oh. Uh -huh. Supernatural breakthroughs. Amen. Supernatural breakthroughs. Amen. Supernatural breakthroughs. Amen. Supernatural breakthroughs. Amen. We are starting this church. Starting this church. I stood up. I said, who? Who is going to put the carpet? Three people rose up. He said, Papa, we are going to put the whole carpet for this church. That's the reason you are enjoying. Because supernatural breakthroughs was released for us Amen. to be in this place. Are you listening to me here? Amen. I did not put even this. Whatever you see, God released people 
to begin to sponsor it. Amen. Whenever you become a faithful tither, God will command even ravens. He will remove the appetite. Uh-huh. And ravens will come and feed you. I receive it. I've enjoyed supernatural breakthroughs. Amen. One of my daughters, I did not have car, a car. I blessed my car. I blessed it. I would be A6. After I blessed it, one of my daughters came to me and said, Papa, you need to have a car. You need to have a car. I said, my daughter, okay, it's up to you. She said, Papa, don't worry. As we're about to cross to 20, 20, 2016, as we're about to cross to 2016, four days, four days before the crossover, a new car appeared outside. They decorated it. Decorated it. I looked at it. I said, Oh, Shabalia Igarosha. Oh. I said, Is this the way God can decide to embarrass his prophet? There are some certain supernatural embarrassment to the point that you cannot even sit down. You'll be so shocked. Oh. You try to question one oh. plus one. It was packed outside. Are you listening to me here? Oh, yes. But with a red ribbon, I said, I receive. I called all my, all my daughters, all my sons. I was jumping, jumping. Supernatural breakthroughs. Whenever you are left, bring for what you have. Know that there is a robber. When I came here, when I came here, I was in a small building opposite. It was a small building. It was jam packed. One day I'm passing. The Lord said, Look at this building. I have given it to your hands. The owner of this building demanded, demanded uh, uh, 150. When I looked at him, I said, Sir, we don't have that money. Becomes like a lawyer. Tight becomes your advocate. Tight becomes your judge in the time of calamity. I told him, sir, this is how much we're going to give you. I said, if you want, your building, no one will enter. I told him, I said, your building, no one will enter. One month, two months, three months, the man called me. He said, sir, have you changed your mind? I said, no. That's how we came here. We signed. About the other week, we entered here. We began gymnastics. We began paralyzing, removing Jews out of the bonds of the devil. Supernatural breakthroughs. Amen. I was here. First Sunday, there was no carpet. First Sunday, there was no carpet here. There was nothing. I was having a service here. As I was having a service, Sunday of groundbreaking, I ministered. The place was jam packed. After ministration, when I reached home, my son died. They called me. He said, Angel has died. I said, What? I said, Angel has died. I reached home. I found the boy. He's already gone. You are rushing him to the hospital. The whole house is gone. The boy is not breathing. I think Mama Eva, she was there. Mama Eva, she was there. Tried to bring the boy to life. The boy was not breathing. He's gone. He's gone. You have never seen calamity. If it was not because of my faithful tithing, my firstborn would have died. And people would have called me a real... Say this one. Uh, real man. Satanist. Satanist. Imagine I was doing my groundbreaking, my groundbreaking, and my son died. He dies. Oh, what do people call me? Huh? He said, Ah, the, all the people that is gathering. He did sacrifice. You know how people are. You know how people are. They can manipulate anything. A genuine prophet, they'll call him Satanist. My boy was gone. They took him to the hospital. 
Nothing was happening. I went outside. I was crying. I was crying. I said, Lord, you brought me in South Africa to bring shame? I asked him God a question. I said, God, did you bring me in South Africa to bring me shame? And I reminded him, I said, Lord, when I was entering South Africa, you said you shall exalt my head. And my head will not suffer shame. And I heard the voice from the Lord. The Lord said, all the power invested in you. All the power invested in you. Go and take your mouth. Breathe in. And your son will come back to life. I went the boy was sleeping on the hospital bed. As he was sleeping, I took my mouth. Mama Eva, she was there. And my wife, she was there. I took my mouth. My mouth. I put it close to the nose of my son. I said, you my son, by the action of God over my life, I declare today you will live. I breathe in. The boy opened up the eyes. I breathe in. The boy jumped out. Oh. That's how he came out of the bed. And he began to dance. Power. He began to play around. All the nurses, all the nurses, they began to be surprised. Is this the boy who was already gone? Supernatural breakthroughs. Supernatural breakthroughs is when God decides to remove embarrassment and keep your head for honor. Whenever you are a faithful titan, honor is inevitable. God will decide to honor you in the midst of trouble, in the midst of battles, God will honor you. That's how God honored my head. He said, you can never lose your child. Do you know what it means to lose your firstborn? Huh? Do you know what it means to lose your firstborn? Any man who loses his firstborn, ha, he must pray on the secondborn. Because the firstborn is the first seed and God is a God of the first seed. That's the reason every firstborn must be a pastor. If you don't know, if you're a firstborn, you must be a pastor. Because God said, all the firstborn belongs to me. Lift your hands. Say, Father, Father. every robber of destiny, every robber of destiny, every robber of tithe, every robber of tithe, robbing my finances, robbing my finances, I declare, I declare, today, 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 by your power, by your power, by the authority, by the authority, invested, invested in your word, in your word, every hook, every hook of limitation, of limitation, frustration, frustration, sickness, sickness, poverty, poverty in my life, in my life, it is destroyed, 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 every hook, every hook, every hook, every hook, financial problem, financial problem in my life. In my life, in my bank account, in my, bank account, in my children, in my children, in my ministry, in my ministry, break, 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 Rasso apa atale kabra ete Rasso apa katalaka Riso ata apatele Rakoto epra atalaka Riso apatalaka Eroto epata Barroso te ete Makatala itala apra etele katalikita Aroto emata eko pra atale kata Iso apatele mandele akaroso era Barro mandele bra atale ketele bra Etala pra etele bra katala etele kete Iso mandala atele mandala atele kote Maso abadala kata Rasso patele katalege Rasso abadale mandale ete Barroso te Iso pata Eko pata Iso pate Ero kota Iko pata Iso pata Ikata pata Makata la kata gana 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 Maroko talebe Marakata la kata le gita amadele Maso pata la ka Eroto pata E mako to pete Maso pata le gita abata Makata la kata le gete Maka pra atele kata le ge Eroso pata la gita E maka atala pata le ko Maso pra itala atala mate Raso te Atala pra itala pata le kata le kata 
you know that you have not been giving tithe and you want the message of God financially, you want the message of God, God to pay your debt supernaturally, rush on this altar, rush on this altar, rush on this altar. You know you don't give tithe. You know you don't give tithe. Rush on this altar. Rush on this altar. Rush on this altar. Lift your hands. Begin to pray for mercy. Pray for mercy. I said pray for mercy. Pray for mercy. Pray for mercy. Pray for mercy. You know you don't give tight. You know you have been robbing Jehovah. You know that you have not been giving tight. What belongs to him? Ask him for mercy. 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 That's the reason you are experiencing financial demons. I say, open your mouth. You know, deep down your heart, that you have never given him what belongs to him. Lift your hands and open your mouth. Ask him. He must have mercy for your company. He must have mercy for your business. He must have mercy for anything you touch. He must have mercy for your children. He must have mercy for anything pertaining to your life. Lift your hands, lift your voice. Ask him for mercy. 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 Listen, all of you that side, come here. Come here on the sofa. Come here. Lift your hands. Listen, I have seen Mr. Benjamin. I have seen people that were influential. So influential. And just from nowhere, things began to go sour for them. They try to do whatever they can do. They try to pray. They try to come to church. They try to go for prayer and fasting. Financially, things were not opening. Whenever you eat what belongs to God, tight, God places a curse on you. And that curse is not removed by a man of God. That curse is not removed by prayer. That curse is not removed by prayer and fasting. That curse is not removed by you coming to church. That curse is not removed by you cleaning the church. That curse is removed when you obey him back in tight. It is when you begin to redeem your tight. You know how many years you have not given your tight. You know how many months you have not given your tight. It is up to you. You know that you have not given for three weeks. You have not given for one month. You have not given for one year. Ask him for mercy. Amen. That's the reason financially. You are trying to look for a job. Whatever you try to do, it's not prospering. You try, you try to start a business, it crumbles. Is God fighting you? It's better you become the enemy of somebody than to become the enemy of God. Amen. Because whenever you become the enemy of God, there's no refuge. There's nowhere where you can run to. That's the reason many people, they can't run to God because they have a debt with God. They have a debt with God. Anytime you are not giving tight, you have a debt with God. God will begin to collect. He'll begin to collect from you indirect. He'll, be, he'll begin to collect from you. That's the reason many people, they are spending their money at the hospital. Their cars are broken. All the cars are broken. Whatever they try to do, thieves are coming to steal their money. Why? The protection has been removed away from them. The Bible says in the book of Hosea, chapter number 6, he said, come, let us return back unto the Lord. He has torn us apart, but on the third day, he will revive us and he will bring us up. Listen to me. God wants you to come back to him with what he says you must bring to him. He wants you to come back to him with what he says you must bring back to him. He said, bring all the tithe in the storehouse. Test me and see if I will not open the windows of heaven. Tithe is the last guard. It's the last card of God. When everything fails, tithe does not fail. Lift your hands.
Say, Father, Father from, today, from today, all those that are watching me, if you know in your life you don't give tight, listen to me. If you know in your life you don't give tight, you are a robber. Number one, protection has been taken away from you. Number two, divine supply has been taken away from you. Number three, divine health has been taken away from you. The same tithe that was supposed to bless you is the same tithe that will begin to fight you. Make a decision today. Be on the side of titles. Never eat what belongs to the Lord. Because whenever you eat what belongs to the Lord, it's like a hook in your mouth. And God will begin to pull you. Today, you have a choice. Whether to be a tighter or not to be a tighter. Amen. Lift your hands. Say, Father. Father. With my mouth. With my mouth. I confess. I confess. That I have not been giving tight. That I have not been giving tight. But you are merciful. But you are merciful. I will redeem. I will redeem my tight. My tight. From today. From today. I make a covenant. I make a covenant to start tithing. To start tithing. So that I can enjoy. So that I can enjoy financial grace. Financial grace. Financial blessing. Financial blessing. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Open doors for me. Open doors for me. Open doors for me. Open doors for me. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Put your two hands for Jesus. Wow. Clap your hands for Jesus. If you don't know, God has forgiven you. Amen. Power. But his forgiveness is with a condition. When it comes to tight, God does not just forgive you. He does not show you mercy just like that. He shows you mercy and he gives you instruction to pay back. To pay back. How do you know tight? Tight is the 10% of your income. 10% of your income. Whatever God. I see people, they don't honor tight. Tight is not anything you pick in the pocket. Tight is something you prepare from home. You begin to prepare it from home. You make a standard. You prepare your tithe. You prepare your seed. You prepare your offering. People on a bus than church. People on a bus than church. People, they will just get anything. What they find in the pocket, they put it in the envelope and they'll come and lift it before the throne of God your heart is a witness whenever you refuse to give tight you are refusing divine supply you are refusing you are, you are simply saying I don't acknowledge that you God you have been my blesser companies are closing companies are closing Marriages are breaking. Ministries are shutting down. Destinies are crumbling because of 10%. This is 20 rent. What is the tithe? Two rent. God give, he has given you 18 rent. If you want, you can tithe weekly. If you want, you can tithe monthly. If you want, you can tithe you can tie three months, three months, if you want. You begin to package your tithe. I can show you with my wife. We have been packaging tight. At one time, I packaged tight for one year. We had almost 800,000 800, rents as tight of the church. My tight, 
my wife's tight, my son's tight, plus all the pastors of the branches, all of them they tight, and I pack all of it.